I want to welcome you to church today, wherever you're streaming from. If you're part of our local community here in Nashville, we want to say welcome to church. And if you're part of our extended online family, whether you're across the States or around the world, we want to extend a special welcome to you today, wherever you're watching from and say, again, welcome to church. And, you know, our prayer really is this. I know that we're, you know, we're distant in, uh, in, in physical location right now, but God is always near to us. We have the opportunity and the ability to draw near to God, even even in a time where we're separated, distance from those around us. And I, you know, I really want to encourage you during this season, church, wherever you are, that this would be a time that we can really draw close to God. I know that we've been talking this quite a bit over the last few weeks, but what an incredible opportunity that we have right now to spend time really drawing into the deep places with God. And, you know, I don't know if you're like me, but you found yourself even over these last few weeks just asking the question of, God, when, when are we going to get back to normal? When are we going to get back to the way things used to be? I, I found myself even this week saying, God, when, when are we going to get back to doing church normal? When are we going to get back to doing it the way we're comfortable with, the way that we're used to? And, you know, again, I just felt the Holy Spirit stir me to encourage us all today that, you know, we're not going back to an old season. We're not going back to the old ways of doing things. We're actually not even going to necessarily go back to doing church exactly the way that it was in the past. But this is not a time to mourn the past. It's a time to celebrate what God has done in the past. But realize this, church, we are stepping in to a new normal. In fact, we're in it right now. We might be sitting here waiting, thinking, man, I can't wait to, you know, we get past this season of, of social distancing or social isolation or whatever you want to call it. But can I encourage you that you, your new normal doesn't have to wait for some moment down the track. You actually have the opportunity. You and I have the opportunity right now to step into a new normal with God. And in fact, I, I want to take a few moments as we come around the word today to unpack this with us because your new normal can start now. I know for so many of us, we're, we're, we're still thinking about the way things used to be done. And quite honestly, there's going to be a lot of things about life that might change as we move forward. There's going to be a lot of things that we're going to have to get used to in the new normal. And we have two choices. We can choose to focus on that and think about how discouraging it is that we're not going to get to do things the way that we used to. Or we can take the opportunity and press in to lean in to what it is that God wants to bring us into in this new season. So we're not going back to how it used to be. See, there's new opportunities for us right now. There's new availability. There's new destinies that God wants to unleash in a new season in our lives. And my prayer is this. My prayer is that you don't miss the new thing because you're still focused on the you thing. That you don't miss the new thing that God wants to do in your life because you're still focused on the thing that you think makes up who you are. The thing that you think gives you identity. The thing that you think gave you a history or a destiny because it's what you did or who you are. For many people, your future is going to look a little different, but this is the thing about God. Your destiny is not hinged on your history. Your destiny is actually hinged on your availability. And right now there's a season like no other. There's an opportunity like we've never had to come and make ourselves available to God for what He wants to do in our futures. My prayer is even as we come around this word today, because I know some of us are, are stuck in this moment. We're stuck in the moment of thinking, man, I just can't wait to get back. And yet God's saying, I want to take you forward. It's never about going backwards. It's always about going forwards. It's never about the former seasons, even though we honor and respect those. God wants to bring you from glory to glory to glory. He has something new for you. He has something that maybe you haven't even seen yet. The word promises that, you know, He has things in store for us that no eye has seen, no ear has heard what He has stored up for you. And I, I want you to press in to that today, but I, I believe this is an incredible season and a, an incredible opportunity for growth in our lives, personally, spiritually, relationally. We have an amazing opportunity right now while some of the things around us, maybe while some of the busyness has calmed down a little bit, you have an incredible opportunity to dig into some of those places where maybe you've been afraid to go and, I again want to stir your heart that this is the time that the Holy Spirit wants to do a deep work in your life. Let's not get stuck in the moment. Let's press into the new things that God has for us. And 
You know, I was reminded as I was reading the, the word over the last few weeks, I was reminded again of this story in Matthew chapter 14 that I, I just want to read to you from verse 22. It says, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. Just as we get into this story today, this is a moment right after Jesus has just fed the 5,000. He's just shown the disciples this incredible miracle. He's just provided in a supernatural way. And then Jesus sends the disciples on ahead of him. And verse 23, it says, after he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. Now, Jesus had gone up the mountain as the disciples were on the boat. Somehow, Jesus had supernaturally got from the mountain to the shore and now Jesus comes out to meet them. Verse 26, it says, When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, then tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him saying, truly, you are the son of God. You know, I, I uh, remember a time in my life, actually when I was in second grade, and I was about seven years old. And you know, in Australia, we have a game called cricket. It's kind of the Australian equivalent to baseball. It's, uh, you know, the rules are a little different and the way the game, you know, plays is a little different. But see, in cricket, you have a batsman similar to what you would call, uh, you know, a batter in a, in a baseball game. And, and uh, the, the, the whole goal of this batsman is to hit the ball as far as he can so that the team can make runs. Down the other end, you have what in Australia we call a bowler, which is equivalent to, you know, a, a baseball pitcher. And then behind the, the batsman, you have the wicket keeper. Now, the wicket keeper's goal, the wicket keeper's job is similar to a catcher, except in cricket, you have behind the batsman, you have three stumps. They're three pieces of wood that are spaced out. They're, they stand parallel. They're about two and a half feet off the ground. And the, the bowler's job or the pitcher's job is to try and throw that ball so it gets past the batter and knocks over those stumps. And when I was in second grade, we were playing this game of cricket at lunchtime at school. And my job was to be the wicket keeper. I was standing there behind the wickets, behind the stumps. And, and you know, as we were playing the game, I noticed that one of the stumps just, it, it kept kind of falling over. And so, you know, here I am a, a, as a seven-year-old and, and I, I really should be paying attention to the ball that's coming my way. I should be paying attention to what the batter is doing. And yet I'm distracted by the fact that this stump, this wicket keeps falling over. So in my seven-year-old maturity, my seven-year-old wisdom, I think to myself, you know what? I need to make sure that this stump, the most important thing to me right now is to make sure that this stump doesn't fall over. So I get real close, right up next to the stumps, which is really not a good idea. And, and, and I reach out my hand and I, so I, I sit there holding the stump. Now my job as the wicket keeper actually is to be keeping an eye on the ball so I can potentially catch the ball or you know run out the batter as he goes. But now I'm distracted because there was a situation in front of me that caught my attention. And what I don't realize is this next pitch, this next ball, the batsman takes a step backwards. And as he goes to hit the ball, he winds his bat back so hard. And because I'm not paying attention, I'm just holding the wicket. The batter swings his bat back and smacks me in the side of the head, literally knocked me off my feet. I had a, a bruise the size of a tennis ball for days after that, almost gave me a concussion. And I, I'm telling you that story today because so often we can get distracted by something that's right in front of us. We get distracted by the surroundings that we lose sight 
of the responsibility of the moment. We lose sight of what we should be doing in that moment. See, I should have been paying attention to the rest of the game. I should have been paying attention to what the bowler was doing and the batsman was doing in that moment, but I was distracted by something around me. See, so often it's easy for us to be distracted by the situations around us. Maybe you even find yourself in this moment distracted by the things that are going on around you. Maybe you're distracted by the th- the fact that you've lost work. Maybe you're distracted by the the fact that you're, you're out of sorts. The rhythm of your life doesn't look like what it used to. And so you're distracted right now. But I want to encourage you today. Don't miss what God is doing in your moment, in your season, because you're distracted by the things around you. See, when Peter kept his eyes on Jesus was when he walked in the miraculous. Peter walked literally in a miracle as he kept his eyes focused on Jesus. But yet it wasn't the water beneath him that robbed him of his miracle in the moment. It was the noise around him. See, he was okay with what was beneath him until he was distracted by what was around him. He was okay with what was beneath him, what he'd already overcome until he was distracted by what was around him. I know for many people, even during this season, there are areas that you maybe once had already dealt with in your life. You felt like you had it under control. Maybe you had kind of got free from some of these things in the past and yet in this season, you found yourself slipping back into some old habits, some old routines. Can I encourage you again during this season? Let's not lose what we had authority over because we're distracted by what the enemy is bringing towards us. See, I know that right now it seems like the wind's getting loud around you. In in the New King James Version of this passage, it says that the wind was boisterous. I know it might feel like the enemy's louder than ever in your life right now. It might feel like the enemy is louder than ever in your thoughts, in your heart. Maybe the enemy's whispering things of, you know, your your finances are never gonna be like they used to, or your opportunities are never gonna be like they used to, or your relationships are never gonna be how they used to be. Your marriage is never going to be as good as what it was before you came into this season. I want to take a moment and break those lies right now and rebuke the lies of the enemy. Your best days are ahead of you. Your marriage has its best days ahead of you. Your finance have your best days ahead of you. The greatest opportunities that you've ever experienced are still ahead of you if you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus during this season. Don't get distracted by the wind and the waves around you. Don't get distracted by the noise that the enemy wants to stir up around you, but keep your eyes on Jesus. I don't know if you've ever, you know, really took a moment and thought about this this whole scenario, how it played out for the disciples. You know, one moment they're sitting on on a hill watching Jesus do this incredible miracle where he's, you know, distributing food miraculously to the people there. And then Jesus goes, up the mountain, sends them on ahead. And and the disciples, the Bible says that the disciples spent the entire night up against these winds. Says the winds battered the boat all night. All night they struggled. And then we find them sometime in the early hours of the morning. And as they're still out there with these winds going, Jesus walks out towards them. Now, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, you know, how we perceive this story, how we perceive how this is presented to us. I think for, for so many of us, we probably think, you know, by the time Jesus was walking out in the water, the water was still, the water was calm. You know, we kind of get this visual picture that Jesus was walking on this flat surface, but nowhere in Scripture do we actually read that. See, the wind wasn't calm when Jesus walked out to the disciples. I think so often we're, we're hoping that Jesus is gonna show up and just His very presence is gonna calm the storm around us. But I wanna tell you this today, friend, Jesus is not afraid of the storm that you're in right now. Jesus is not terrified of the waves or the wind that's around you right now. Jesus is not intimidated by it. He's not afraid of it. In fact, Jesus already has authority over it. But just because He has authority over it doesn't mean that He needs to make it calm to prove that He has authority. I think so often we're waiting for the storm to be calm, to realize that Jesus is here with us in the moment. But can I encourage you with this today, friend? There is peace for you, even in the midst of the storm that you might be in right now. See, Jesus showed up for the disciples, but it wasn't until He got in the boat that He commanded the wind and the waves to die down. Jesus has a perfect time for when He's gonna calm the storm. But can I encourage you right now, if it feels like there's storms going on all around you, does not mean that Jesus is not with you. He wants to show up even in the midst 
of the storm. He wants to show up in the turbulence of your finances. He wants to show up in the turbulence in your marriage. He wants to show up in the turbulence of the thoughts that are going on in your mind about your future, about how things look ahead of you right now and show you that even in the midst of that, He's still there with you. And when you invite Him into that place is when He'll bring the peace, is when He'll bring the calm. See, Jesus wants to show up in your storm. I think so often we're waiting for Jesus to calm the storm before we're willing to say that we'll trust you. Jesus, you know, I, I, I'll trust you with my future once all of this dies down. I'll, I'll trust you with my finances, you know, once I've got my business back on track. I'll trust you with my business once I can figure out a plan for the future. I'll trust you with this or I'll trust you with that when I see that things are calm, when I see that the storm has died down. Can I tell you, friend, this is the moment to start trusting Jesus. This is the moment to begin to put your trust in Jesus. This is the moment when you begin to say, Jesus, I trust you with my future. I trust you with my marriage. I trust you with my finances. I trust you with my children. I trust you now. I'm not gonna wait till tomorrow. I'm not gonna wait till things calm down before I trust you, but I'm gonna make a decision today that I'm gonna trust you with my life. See, Jesus had authority over the storm. And He wants to have authority over the storms in your life today. You know, the disciples found themselves in the storm and maybe you feel like you're in the midst of a storm right now, but can I, can I tell you this today? And this maybe is gonna take a, a bit of maturity for some of us, but some of us, we actually love the drama of the storm. We love to surround ourselves with storms. We actually maybe even find identity in the, storms that are going on around us. Maybe that's not you today, but maybe it's someone that you know who you think, man, there, there's just always drama in their life. There's always, seems like there's always a storm. There's always an attack. The amount of people that I hear that just are constantly saying, oh, I'm really under attack. Pastor Henry, pray for me. I'm really under attack. Can I, can I encourage you actually to step up today to realize that not everything that we walk through, not every storm that we walk through is an attack of the enemy. And in fact, the more you give the enemy airtime in your life, the more you're gonna find yourself feeling like you're under attack. But can I remind you that you have, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have authority over the storms that you walk through. And the more that I've walked in my authority with the Holy Spirit, the more I've actually found that the storms don't affect me as much anymore. They dissipate much quicker. They don't control my mind. They don't control my heart. And in fact, I've found myself as I've allowed Jesus into those areas of my life, I've found myself more and more as the years have gone by walking in a peace that I never thought that I could ever experience. Why? Because I've learned how to, in the midst of one storm, give Jesus access and not get freaked out when I can't understand or control the circumstances that are going on around me. And yet as I've looked to Jesus, He's walked me through, He's brought me into the miraculous See, if you fix your eyes upon the storm, you're gonna miss out on the miracles that Jesus wants to do. But if you fix your eyes on Jesus, He can do miracles even in the midst of the most craziest seasons of your life. See, it's not time for us as Christians, as sons and daughters of God, to be walking in perpetual drama. And in fact, right now the world is pretty dramatic around us. And yet we have the opportunity to live in peace to show the world that we don't have to be affected. We don't have to be bogged down. We don't have to be burdened by the drama of things going on around us. And I'm not discounting that maybe you are walking through a very real struggle right now, but friend, can I encourage you? Your outcome doesn't have to look like the outcome of the people around you. Why? Because you have hope. You have access to peace. You have access to a joy that comes supernaturally, even in the midst of the storm. When you begin to trust God, when you begin to stop fixating on the drama. What if we could be a people that actually live the rest of 2020 drama free? What if we could actually get to a place where even in the midst of the craziness and the turbulence around us, we have such a trust, such a faith, such a hope in God, such a walk with the Holy Spirit that it would seem like, even though it's noisy to the people around us, our gaze is fixed on Jesus in a way that causes the noise to die down. It causes the storm to die down. It causes the waves and the wind to die down around us. See, there's peace for you in this season as you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. You know, I think sometimes we can think that 
You know, the destiny, the future that Jesus has for us is based on the opportunities that we create for ourselves or the gifts that we have developed in our own lives. But, you know, Jesus, He didn't need the disciples' boat to get to the same destination that they were headed to. Jesus didn't need the same vehicle, the same method of transportation. He didn't need the same vehicle to get to the destiny that the disciples seemed to have needed in that moment. See, Jesus, as He stole away with the Father, as Jesus got away with His Father, God was able to do something supernaturally and still allow Jesus to end up in the same place, albeit by a supernatural encounter. Can I propose to you today that maybe there are some things that God actually in this season is wanting you to draw away with Him? Because what He can do in the secret place can far outweigh anybody else's method, anybody else's vehicle, anybody else's natural opportunity to get to their destiny. What if Jesus could take you to your destiny, but via a supernatural means? It takes for you and I to get away in the secret place. See, Jesus needed some alone time with His Father in order to find out how to get to where He needed to get to by a miraculous means. And I believe that, you know, there's many people that are making themselves busier than they've ever been in this season, trying to figure out the steps forward. Maybe you've even found yourself totally consumed with thoughts or totally consumed in your time trying to figure out how you can get to, you know, where you need to get to, what your future is going to look like, how you can get to your goals with your business, those destinations for your ministry, whatever it is today. But can I encourage you with this today, friends, that Jesus, it was when He went and spent time alone with His Father that God was able to take Him supernaturally to His destiny. You have an incredible opportunity. You and I have an incredible opportunity right now during this season to spend time with God and to find out His ways, His thoughts, His heartbeat, where He wants to take you in your destiny, in your journey with Him. And it starts in the secret place. It starts when we make that decision to get away in that quiet time with Him. Don't miss this opportunity to spend this time seeking the face of God because I believe He has mysteries for you. Don't miss what God wants to do in this season. See, it says in, in Mark chapter six, when we read this same story that when Jesus got in the boat with them and He did this miracle for them, He did it because they'd actually missed, they hadn't perceived, it says that their hearts were hardened to the previous miracle that He did. And so He had to show up and do another miracle for them in that moment. I wonder how many of us, we've actually missed the miracles that God's been doing in the past. We've even missed the miracles that God's doing in this season because we've been so focused on the things that are going on around us. But can I encourage you today, don't miss the miracles that Jesus is doing right now in your life. You might look at your life and say, well, God's not doing any miracles right now. Don't miss even the smallest miracle. One of the greatest things that you can do in this season is begin to begin to write a list, begin to write a journal, begin to take note of the small things, the smallest things that God is doing. One of the things that I've tried to do every morning when I wake up and it's something that I've done for a long time, but even during this season, I've been more, even more mindful to, to be doing this every day, just beginning to wake up and thank God for the smallest of things. Get in my car and go for a drive and I, this is the first things out of my mouth. I, I wanna begin to thank God for the small victories, the, the smallest miracles that He's doing in the moment. The fact that I get to wake up every morning that I'm still breathing oxygen, that I wake up every morning and I, Thank God for my kids. I thank God for my wife. I thank God for, you know, the things that we see God doing right now in our church. Even though there's challenges going on around us, there are still so many miracles that God is doing. And I found this time and time again, that my breakthroughs actually start from my thankfulness. My breakthroughs start in my acknowledgement of the little things that God is doing in my life. See, they pave a way for the miraculous. In order for Peter to walk towards Jesus, he had to take one step out of the boat it was actually the biggest step that he had to take was the one where he got out of the boat. And yet as he took one step after another, after another, while he kept his eyes on Jesus was how he saw the miracles unfold before him. What if during this season, you could take this opportunity to continue to thank God 
for the miracles that he's doing. Even now in this moment, allow the Holy Spirit to stir your heart again about the miracles that God's doing in your life. If you feel like you've been praying and you haven't seen miracles, don't focus on what you haven't seen. Don't focus on the things going on around you right now, but focus on the smallest miracles because I tell you, it's gonna pave a way for the bigger miracles. Don't let your heart be hardened during this season. Don't miss the miracles that God's doing in this season, but thank Him right now for every miracle in Jesus' name. See, don't miss what He's trying to do in you in this moment. This is really gonna set you up for the next season. And can I, can I tell you this church today? I wanna encourage you because I think some people right now are despondent. Some people are discouraged saying, I'm never gonna make it through this season. Can I tell you, you're gonna make it through this season. You are gonna make it through this season. You're gonna get through this storm. You are gonna get to the other side of this. Don't lose heart. Don't lose sight of Jesus in this situation because you are gonna reach the other side. Don't even be perturbed if you wake up tomorrow and the storm is still raging around you. Jesus is with you in this moment. And he's gonna get in your boat and bring you to the other side. Can, can we fast forward a, a little further into Peter's journey? And there's this moment where Jesus is about to be taken to be crucified and says the Roman soldiers, they come to take Jesus and Peter was with him at the time. And, you know, Peter, he begins to respond in the flesh as, you know, we've seen Peter do so many times as we read through the gospel. His, his immediate reaction is to respond in the flesh. His immediate reaction is to pull out his sword and try and, Take this on in the flesh. He tries to fight really something that's going on in the spiritual realm in this moment. He tries to fight it in the flesh. He pulls out his sword and he cuts off the ear of this particular Roman soldier named Malchus. It's interesting because this, this, this Roman soldier, his name means kingdom. It's, it's, it's so amazing to me that in this moment, Peter's not perceiving what's happening in the supernatural realm around him. He's got his eyes fixed on a natural kingdom when actually what was happening was something that was happening in the supernatural realm, something that was happening between supernatural kingdoms in that moment. And yet Peter's trying to fight it in the flesh. And so often, so many of us, even in this moment, we're trying to fight things in the flesh. We're trying to fight a supernatural kingdom, not understanding that we're trying to do it in the flesh. And yet Jesus says to Peter, Peter, don't miss this. Don't try and fight what's happening in the supernatural realm in the flesh. We fast forward again in Peter's experience with Jesus. And, you know, Peter gives me so much hope, to be honest. There's so many things that I, 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 I read about Peter, I understand about Peter's life that honestly give me so much hope because in my own life, I feel like there's so many times that I've, I've missed what God's doing. I've missed what Jesus is doing because I've responded in the flesh or I've been distracted by my circumstance around me. And yet Jesus never gives up hope with Peter. In fact, He's prophesied over Peter. Peter, even though you're a bit of a mess, even though you're a bit of a wreck over here and you miss it over there, I'm gonna build my church upon you. And I know that that might be something that you might feel right now in your own life. Man, I just, I miss it so many times. Friend, don't give up hope. Don't get discouraged right now because even if you've missed it in the past, there's still a great opportunity. There's still a destiny that God has for you. And I love as we read on into Acts chapter two, after Jesus has left them and the disciples have this incredible encounter on the day of Pentecost. They have a visitation from the Holy Spirit. And this is really what I wanna to get to today because I know for so many of us, we've been trying to figure out this season on our own. But it was an encounter with the Holy Spirit that actually changed everything for Peter. It was an encounter that left him marked forever. And all of a sudden we find this man who struggled with believing Jesus, who, you know, who, who walked in a miracle and then missed the miracle. He walked with the Saviour and then denied the Saviour. He saw the Kingdom of God and yet he still responded in his flesh so many times. And yet Jesus never gives up on Peter. He never cuts him off from his future. He always prophesies into his future. And we find in Acts chapter two, this encounter with the Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden, this same man that had failed so many times gets up in front of thousands and thousands of people and begins to preach with the authority of heaven. He begins to step into the destiny that God had always planned for him. And he did it, not because he worked out how to do it in the natural, but he did it 
because he had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. So he had a season where he had been essentially locked together with just a handful of people waiting upon the Lord. Now it wasn't a season where they were forced into it by social isolation, but it was a season where they had made the most of that opportunity to get away with God. And what God did on the other side of a season where they were isolated was pour out His Spirit that was gonna change their destiny and their future forever. And I believe this is the same opportunity that we have right now, a season where we can get away with the Holy Spirit and God can do something supernaturally in you and I in this season, like I believe He's not been able to do in seasons past because we have time that we can get away with Him. Don't miss this opportunity to get away with God, to allow the Holy Spirit to do in you something that's gonna set you up supernaturally for the destiny that God has for you. And as we've come around this Word today, I pray that God's been stirring your heart, encouraging you in the spirit realm. But I, I wanna take a moment and pray for us right now, because I believe God's even stirring you in this moment, that the Holy Spirit can do something right now. So wherever you are, would you take a moment and close your eyes and allow the Holy Spirit to begin to speak to your heart. Maybe there are some areas that you've allowed the enemy to, to just get loud right now in this season. Maybe you have been distracted by the wind and the waves around you. Maybe you have been distracted thinking that you've missed out on your destiny, that you know your best days are behind you. Friend, I declare over you again in the name of Jesus that your best days are ahead of you. But as your eyes are closed right now, just allow the Holy Spirit to come and speak to your heart. And Father, right now we just invite you Lord, You know us better than we know ourselves. God, You know the areas that, maybe we've missed the areas that You've been doing miracles in our lives. Maybe we've missed, God, the, just even the smallest of things because we've been distracted by the loud noise around us. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, would You come again and stir our hearts that we could center our lives again upon You, that we could fix our eyes again upon Jesus. That God, that You have miracles for us to step into but more importantly, God, there's a posture that You want us to step into in this season. God, a, a place that we can get away, where we can just get close with You again. And God, if we've had that in the past and we've got away from that, God, would You stir our hearts again, Lord, to make that decision every single day to get away with You in Your presence, not for the miracle, but so that we can just know You in a deeper way. I thank You for it, Holy Spirit, right now. Your name. And just as your eyes are closed, I wanna ask you this, friend. Maybe you don't even know Jesus. Maybe you've never made a decision to invite Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and your Savior. Or maybe you once have and, you know, just the craziness of life has got in the way. And right now you would look at your life and think, man, Jesus is definitely not the center of my life. Whether you've never asked Him before or maybe you once have and you've walked away from Him. As your eyes are closed, I wanna give you an opportunity right now to make Jesus the Lord of your life, the center of your life again. See, this same Jesus, He doesn't wanna just bring peace to you, but He wants to forgive you of your sin. He wants to come and be the rock, the center of your life, the centerpiece, so that you can build your life upon a firm foundation. And if that's you today, whether you've never invited Jesus into your life before, or maybe you once have, but today you said, I need to get right with Jesus again. Would you pray this prayer after me right now? Wherever you are, just pray this out loud. Say, Dear Jesus, right now, I invite you into my life to be my Lord and my Saviour. Thank you that you died upon the cross for me. Thank you that you rose again for me. And thank you that you love me and that you forgive me of my sin. So right now, I ask you to be the center of my life. In your name I pray, amen, amen. And from wherever you are, wherever you prayed that prayer from, right now on the screen, you'll see a, a link. We would love for you to take a moment and click on that link because our team would love to take a second and reach out to you this week and follow you up, pray with you wherever you are around the world so that we can connect with you and help you on your journey with Jesus because we believe that this is the greatest decision that you can ever make in your life. The greatest decision is making Jesus the center of your life. Because I tell you, when you make Jesus the center of your life, the wind and the waves can come, 
but you can still have peace even in the midst of the storm. We love you so much, church, and we really are praying for you right now. I know for some people, this has been an incredible season, and for others, this has been the most challenging season that you've ever walked through. And yet, let me one more time encourage you that today, Jesus can bring peace in the midst of your storm. We love you so much, and we pray that as you go into your week, that you would walk courageously, that you would walk boldly, knowing that Jesus is with you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. We look forward to seeing you soon.